Welcome back to part three and building the ultimate overlanding setup for my first gen Toyota Sequoia. In this part, we're gonna be wrapping up the drawers, getting them all secured to the sliders, and then also building the two smaller drawers which are going to be within the main drawers. I think to start today, I'm gonna to work on one of the smaller drawers, building one of those. I've kind of laid out one of the sheets of plywood that I need to kind of make a big cutout. And if you guys can see behind me, I've traced a rough line. Um, the reason I need to cut this out is because I'm actually going to be putting a sink on a slider and having it uh, as part of the drawer. As part of this drawer here. So I haven't used this in a long time. The last time I used it was when I was making cornhole boards and I needed to cut out the center circles and it worked decently. So uh, I think we'll give it another shot today. The reason I need to build some of the smaller drawers first is because once you mount the main sliders to the drawer, I use these bolts, which are great, but they can, as you guys can see, they kind of stick out. Now it's not a problem for this left drawer. I just am going to mount these sliders uh, on the top just like that so they're out of the way but on this drawer on the right you can see it's a lot smaller it's only about a two and a half inch space and what i haven't mounted it yet but once these bolts are here um there's not going to be room to also mount the sliders because these bolts do stick out a little bit which means i need to use the same mounting holes as i am using to secure the uh, sliders to the main drawer um, the same bolt is also going to be securing the smaller set of sliders. So here's kind of where the sink is gonna sit. It has a nice slip uh, to kind of use as support. And then you can push it down like that, fill it with water. Seems pretty great. kind of the, I guess you could call it a drawer. It's, uh, if it works out, it is going to be on sliders, but really what it is is just the area for the sink to sit. I went ahead and glued these pieces together. Uh, I cut the hole with the jigsaw, put in a, a couple of pocket screws along the bottoms as well. These uh, socket cap bolts that I've been using to attach the slider to the drawer. Um, the holes that are in the sliders are not big enough for these to fit through. So we just have to use a drill and expand that. All right, so now I'm gonna try and mount the sliders to the drawer itself. And in addition to that, uh, try and mount the inner set of sliders as well through the same bolts. So um, I went ahead and drilled holes in all of the sliders so that all of the socket cap bolts I'm using will fit. Um, and I'm hoping that I can just line up one set of bolts, kind of like this. Obviously the wood will be in between, but as you guys can see, something like this, where they're using the same uh, the same bolts to mount them. Um, so we'll see if it works. That's kind of what I'm hoping. If this doesn't work, I'm not sure exactly what to do, so fingers crossed. I built the frame to be half an inch taller than the drawers. The frame is 10 and a half inches tall. The drawer is 10 inches tall. So basically what I do is use these quarter inch pieces of plywood, just scrap pieces, and put them underneath the drawer. This way, when you drill the holes through and attach everything, there's a quarter inch of space on the bottom and a quarter inch of space on the top. Nothing is rubbing, nothing is, um, the, the bottom of the drawer is not in contact with the frame at all, and it slides out smoothly, so. So you have some working room. My first hole is pretty much right there, so that gives me enough space. Now with the drawer filled up, now with the drawer pulled out, you can go ahead and prop it up with these quarter inch pieces of plywood. Um, okay, and now pretty much all you do is drill a hole straight through. So I have good news and bad news. The bad news is um, 
this just doesn't work out where I can mount them all together with one bolt. Uh, the reason for that is this bolt has to be perfectly centered. Um, it has to be perfectly centered for the drawer to close. And in order to mount it to this main slider, I need the bolt to not be here, but to be down lower to line up. But as soon as it gets down lower, uh, the slider, as soon as it gets down lower, the slider does not close. I don't think I'm gonna be able to mount the smaller sliders on the same set of bolts as the main sliders. But the good news is, I just figured out that these sliders do fit up and above the uh, bolts that I've mounted for the main sliders. There's just enough space there. So I think that means I can just mount these sliders up top, just like I plan to do on the other side as well. That way they'll be out of the way and uh, not in contact with these bolts for the main slider. And I think that should work fine. Let's go ahead and see if we can mount the smaller set of sliders up top and just above the main set. So this will be a bit of an experiment. Uh, I'm gonna try and mount this sink cutout to the smaller slides. Uh, the issue is that all of these uh, socket cap bolts that I've been using, which I feel pretty good about, they feel super strong. None of them fit since the holes on this slider are so small. I'm gonna try wood screws, um, try and get them to go through the ends and then also into this middle piece, but we'll see. Drawer you can pull out the locks into place, and then this is the uh, kind of uh, sink, I guess. This is popping down, and now you have a place to fill with water. The biggest thing to test is because I can't use any of those um, socket cap bolts to attach the kind of drawer, drawer if you will, um, to these sliders. I just have a bunch of screws. We'll see if they hold up. Uh, I know screws aren't nearly as strong as some of those socket cap bolts might be, so that will be a bit of an experiment. All right, so I'm just kind of curious if this will support all of the weight of the water, and I guess I'd rather find out now than uh, out on a camping trip. We'll let it sit for a bit, but I feel like it looks pretty good. Welcome back, it's the next day. Today we're gonna to get started by building and assembling the pullout drawer uh, on the left side. Then we'll try and get that mounted. And uh, hopefully that will kind of wrap up all of the drawer building. So let's go ahead and get started.
right, so this is the pull-out drawer. Um, and right now what I'm setting up are all of these quarter-inch pieces of plywood, just like the other drawers, which are going to be used to form these dividers. drill a couple holes through some of these dividers that way I can run this propane line from the stove to the gas tanks in the back so just using one of these drill bits I'm not sure what they're called but they allow you to drill a hole I'm doing a three-quarter inch hole to start if we need it to be bigger I can do that but we're gonna start with this all right there's our hole I'll show you guys where this goes the propane is in the last row, if you guys remember. And I got this hose. The plan is to run this to the propane in the back. I just drilled holes in the middle of these false tops. That way you can stick your finger in there and remove them. It makes it a lot easier. Um, so both of these have false tops. Both of these have holes now. I also drilled a hole in the false top in this left drawer. Um, that just makes it so much easier to remove these. Otherwise, you kind of have to try and stick your fingers down there. It just doesn't work too well. The other thing I did too is just slid in the dividers into this right drawer. Uh, all of these pieces were already cut, so I just uh, dropped them in and they all worked pretty well. Okay, so to attach these sliders, I'm using a slightly different method than the other side. I got these M3 socket cap screws. Um, they're just a little bit smaller and they actually fit with these sliders without having to do any modification. They are a bit too long, so what I've been doing is stacking three washers on the end, on the outside, just like that. And then I feed it through, and the little screw just goes right in. and you tighten it all down. to install this smaller drawer now. And just like we did with the main drawers, I have quarter inch pieces of plywood propping uh, the drawer up. Just that way when it's mounted to the sliders, it's not touching on the ground. This drawer uh, on the left side, is now attached. Um, this is where I plan to keep uh, just plates and mugs and uh, cooking utensils and stuff like that. I have a couple of false tops that I added as well. Um, and yeah, this drawer works awesome. And then of course, we got the main pull out as well. All right, so it is Friday right now and I'm trying to get this project mostly finished up today. Uh, the two main things that I'm going to try and take on today, actually I guess three, but um, first of all is just getting the top of the frame cut out and installed. Um, so uh, I just have a random piece of plywood sitting on here right now, but um, yeah, just getting a nice and flat surface on the top of this so that there is a big area um, to sleep 
and that also includes I'm gonna have a hinge uh, with another piece of wood that flips out onto the back of the second row seats when they're folded down so you still get like six feet in length for sleeping room when you want it um, so I need to get that figured out um, the next thing is mounting the frame into the Sequoia, getting that secured down. I, I do need to run to the hardware store and pick up a few things to make that happen, but I think I found a way that is going to work pretty well, so I'll show that to you guys. And the last thing, it's not really related to the build, but I just need to clean everything up. I'm moving in two days and I have just made <laughs> an absolute mess in the garage here, so trying to get everything cleaned up and um, organized before I have to take off. So those are the things on the agenda for today. I think I'm gonna start with trying to get the cover or uh, top of this bed frame put together. Um, and then after that, we will move on to securing the frame and doing some cleanup. But let's go ahead and start making a few cuts and getting this together. I kind of wanted to show you guys how I'm doing this um, and why I decided to cut a couple separate pieces instead of just one big piece. Um, and the reason for that is if you guys watched my video talking about why I'm rebuilding my camper setup, one of the main reasons was that so I can access stuff that's on the inside uh, from the inside of the vehicle. The reason for that is uh, if you have a first gen Sequoia, I'm sure you know, the rear latch handle likes to break a lot. And if that breaks, um, there's no way to open the trunk and you can't slide out any of the drawers and you can't get to anything on the inside. So. Um, long story short, I uh, had that happen once and do not want to uh, get in a situation where this trunk breaks and I can't get anything on the inside. So uh, basically the, I cut three different pieces. The piece on the end and the piece on the other end are going, going to be secured down. And then this piece in the middle, um, I'm going to glue kind of like side pieces to. Um, so it stays in place, but then you can also pull it off um, pull off of uh, the middle. I am just going to use some wood glue to hold these pieces down. Uh, I feel like that should be plenty strong uh, for this. So I quickly want to talk about how I am securing this bed frame into the back of the Sequoia. I think I figured out a pretty solid way to do that. Um, I, I haven't tested it yet, but uh, I think it should work decently. So I'll show you guys what I'm planning to do here. So um, if you come to if you come to the back here um, and you flip the second row seats forward, you pull the carpet back, there is a hole located right here where you can see. Um, I currently have everything set up, but there's pretty much just an open hole. But there's pretty much just an open hole right here. It is a M8 bolt thread, so any M8 bolt should thread into it perfectly fine. That's the case in mine at least. I have a 2002 Toyota Sequoia. Um, so basically what I've done here is I got this L bracket. It's a six inch by six inch L bracket. And then I have an M8 bolt with a spacer. The spacer just pushes it up so that the um, L bracket forms a 90 degree angle. And I'm just kind of gonna connect it from the bottom here and then bolt it into the back of the frame. Now I built the frame to be 50 inches in length. The drawers are 48 inches. So there is uh, a little bit of a gap here. So what I plan to do with that, um, I got some I got some bolts here, uh, a bolt and a couple nuts as well. And pretty much I'm just gonna drill holes and put a bolt through the L bracket and then take the nut and thread the nut in on the other side. So uh, I'll put two bolts here just to hold it in place. And then it'll also be mounted here. I'm hoping this is enough to hold the frame down. I'll do the same thing on the other side there. Um, and yeah, that's the plan for securing the bed frame into the back here. Um, this second row seats still fold down um, there's enough clearance to go over top of these L brackets so hopefully this all works well I was test fitting earlier just with an M8 bolt and a bunch of washers but I just ran to the hardware store and the two things I got are um, longer M8 bolts these ones I was, was test fitting it with were 30 millimeters in length uh, they were a bit short so I think these new ones are 45. Um, and then I also got, instead of stacking a bunch of washers, I just got a couple of these metal spacers as well. So um, that is how I'm attaching the L bracket here. 
let's go ahead and bolt this one down. Yep, there's still plenty of clearance even with the seat folded down. Alright, so I just bolted down the frame to those L brackets that I just showed you guys. Now to test it, I'm gonna pull both of the drawers out at the same time. Uh, I tried that earlier and the whole frame like almost tipped forward. That was before it was bolted down, of course. Um, so I'm kind of curious with the frame attached and bolted down with those L brackets, how it handles uh, both of the drawers pulled out. So let's go ahead and test it. All right, there's one. All right, well, I'm pushing on the drawers and I can see the suspension sagging. Uh, the frame does not seem to be moving at all, which is awesome. That is exactly what I was wanting. If you remove this uh, middle piece, which is kind of like a tray that just sits on top of the frame, there's actually plenty of room to reach under there and get access to those bolts. So uh, I think I can go ahead and glue down the third piece to the frame. Now let's go ahead and test this flip out, see if it works. Perfect. Oh my gosh. That is so awesome. That is exactly how I had envisioned it. Um, as you guys can see, second row seats can be used like normally. You can fold them down, flip this out in just a second, and you have your six foot uh, sleeping platform. Um, you have access to the drawers from the inside. I've got sliders. Pretty much all of the goals with this project uh, worked out. I'm so happy about it because I spent so much time designing this, so much time planning it, making measurements, trying to get everything to work perfectly. Even like something as simple as like this flip out platform, like making sure the bed frame was gonna be the right height to match the seat so that when this folded forward, it uh, was a nice and level surface. So, so, so glad to see this pretty much complete now. Now, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this part, part three, which has kind of been the finishing touches. I gotta get ready and start packing because I am moving in two days now, less than two days, I guess. Um, I've been working so much on this project that I really haven't had any time to start packing, so I need to go get started on that, but there will be a fourth part in the series. The fourth part will be kind of a final overview showing everything about the build, all of the features and talking more about kind of why I designed it the way I did. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this series and I hope it's been helpful or you've enjoyed it. If you guys could like and subscribe, it really does help me out and I really appreciate it. So thanks again and I'll see you guys in the fourth part soon.